afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming to the Helio Motors display at the North American International Auto Show. I've been coming here since it was called the Detroit Auto Show. It's nice to be back. This is our home. Without further ado, I would like to introduce my friend and our CEO, Paul Helio. Paul. Good afternoon, and uh, thanks for coming to uh, our press conference. So. First, just to uh, start out with the basics for the, those of you who are meeting email motors for the first time. <clears throat> Our product is targeted to achieve 84 miles per gallon, sticker price for $6,800, be assembled in Shreveport, Louisiana with 90% North American content. And as compelling as the product is, what really matters, I think, is the impact of the project. Um, with those characteristics, if we hit our nominal business case volume for five years, we can reduce total U.S. gas consumption by nearly a half percent. Now, whether your big concern is our trade deficit due to foreign oil or our carbon footprint due to emissions, the answer is the same. Use less oil. And this project can accomplish that better than any of my more. Um, on jobs, you know, not only are we selling in, in Shreveport, Louisiana, we're targeting 90% you know, North American content, and we can create thousands of new American jobs over the next year. And then, lastly, it doesn't necessarily jump off uh, doesn't necessarily jump off the page. But if you're struggling in this country, your biggest issue is mobility. There's a Harvard economist that did a study that said the number one correlator on whether you get out of poverty or not is mobility. It correlates better than crime rates in your community, number two parent households, or test scores in your grade schools. Mobility is the number one predictor. At $6,800 and 84 miles per gallon, people can afford to get to their job. In New Jersey, they have a st similar study that says something like 60% of their chronically unemployed have turned down jobs because they have no way to get them. So the product's compelling, but I, what I'm really proud of is what this project can do. Uh, behind me is what we call P5. We're not real creative on our naming. It's P for prototype, and it's the fifth one. Um, so uh, what distinguishes it from its predecessor? There's slight um, styling changes to try to achieve the 84 miles per gallon. We're, we're always uh, uh, working on aerodynamics. But what really distinguishes it is, uh, is it has our own engine in it. So the engine has been developed, of course, by IAB, and uh, it's got an ISIN transmission. And it's the first time, we believe, since 1951 when NASA did it, that a new American vehicle company showed a vehicle with its own engine. So this is not a trivial milestone to have our own IC engine. Uh, we did this for a variety of reasons, but, but mainly we can't hit those aggressive targets uh, without doing our own drive. As an example to our commitment to American-made content, uh, I'm here to announce today that MTX, our audio supplier, has committed to assembling our audio in the U.S. So that helps us to achieve our 90% uh, uh, North American content. And, and we're real proud of that. I, I don't know when the last time you purchased a vehicle of any flavor that had audio assembled in America. I think, I think that signals something. It means something. Uh, MTX is a great company. They obviously have the MTX brand. They're, they're owned by MyTech. Uh, they do most of the audio for Starbucks and most of the airports in the, uh, in the country. I think they did the audio in Air Force One, uh, the, the White House press corps. They, they do a lot of stuff, but uh, they're a great partner and we're excited about uh, the, the content. The other thing that we're not ready to show because they got to get the patents in place is the concept itself. And we're committed to not integrating electronics into the vehicle. You know, if you have a well-made vehicle, the electronics on board the day you buy it will be hopelessly obsolete before it gets off the road. How many cars are out there driving around with cassette players, right? So, so by not integrating the audio, by making it modular so you can upgrade, because I guarantee you today's technology will be obsolete before this vehicle will. And so we are committed to not integrating and making it modular with MTX's help. Um, next is uh, funding. So if you haven't been following us, uh, the SEC, as part of the Jobs Act, uh, June 19th made available a new way to go public called Reg A+. Plus. Um, so on June 19th, we did what was called the Test the Waters campaign. 
Uh, we got qualified late November, and we've been su successfully taking investments. And we're announcing today that we are going to close that uh, February 1st. So we could keep it open until March 31st, but uh, we had to get at least 12.6 million by December 31st, which we easily did. And we're choosing to close two months early, and then we will list on the OTCQX shortly thereafter. So I believe we're the first company to go through the entire process of test the waters, take uh, uh, Reg A Plus investments, and then ultimately list on a public uh, list publicly. So we're very excited about that, and we're very excited about becoming a public company. And, and I think that gives us a lot of tools in our toolkit as we move forward as a public company uh, financially. And I think it's a big move for us. And what that money is doing for us is the next series of vehicle, again, creatively named E for engineering, is the E series. And that's really rounding, rounding the curve and getting the, the last straightaway towards the finish line. So we need to build our E series vehicle to do our validation. As we speak right now, there are engineers throughout Detroit detailing parts to uh, have them manufactured to create the first E-Series vehicles. So we are now actively doing that on the strength of our Reg A Plus raise. So uh, we are we are really excited about where we're at. We're excited to finally be at the uh, at Detroit Auto Show. I'm going to go ahead and call it the Detroit Auto Show. Um, and uh, that's all I have prepared. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, sounds like you're hitting all your financial milestones right now. Are you hitting your engineering milestones? Yes. Right now, uh, you know, we're targeting production late uh, fourth quarter 2016. Uh, we are on track to do that. Obviously, you know, it's a tight timeline, so there may be a perturbation that delays that. But right now, we're on track. Thank you. Oh, Yeah, so uh, IAV got involved with the project, I think January or February 2013, so that, that has been in development about three years. Uh, initially, we were just going to reproduce the Geo Metro three cylinder engine, and then IAV showed us uh, the gas mines. We were going to get about 65 miles per gallon with just reproducing it as is. And one dimension at a time, everything's got changed. I think the only thing we have in common with that engine at this point is the three cylinders. <laughs> so, um, so that was the launching off point. It's nowhere near where we finished. But uh, they've done a great job at you know, creating a, a nice modern engine with no new technology. So it's just a great execution of current technology. And, and have you driven it? What is it, what is it like? Can you give us your experience? Yeah, it, it's fun to drive. You know, you, you feel like, well, first of all, just the, the architecture. You don't realize how awkward it is sitting off center of a vehicle until you get an opportunity to sit right between the wheels. You feel like you're in a little race car. The engine's nice. Uh, obviously, the transmission's good. It, 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 it's fun to drive. It really is. Yes? You said you're going to start production Correct. Well, how many units are you planning to produce? So we're tooling up the line for uh, 500 vehicles per ship per day. So day one, we will run the line at 70% speed in one shift. It takes us 45 days to get 100% speed. We'll cut that team into two and backfill. We'll run two shifts at 70% speed. It takes us another 45 days to hit full production of 1,000 vehicles per day. So we'll produce 19,000 vehicles in the first quarter, and then 1,000 vehicles per day, per day thereafter. How will they be sold? Will there be dealerships where you work with existing dealers or will they be sold? Uh, no, we're going to do company-owned stores. Well, first of all, I, I, I skipped over that point. Um, I think another compelling part of the Helium Motors project is we have 48,000 or over 48,000 reservations. So people who put the money down to get this vehicle. Um, I don't believe any other car manufacturer has gotten that many reservations of be on a vehicle a year ahead of production. So I, I think that means something about this project and this pro product. Um, we're going to sell them through company-owned stores, uh, much like Tesla does. Uh, where we're really changing the system is we are abandoning the package system, right? LX, SX, and DX. 
Because what that does is it forces you to buy a whole bunch of stuff you neither need nor want to get the few things you do need, right? So every vehicle comes with uh, air conditioning, power windows, power door lock, and a stereo. Because pretty much everybody wants that. We have two variants, automatic and standard. All the rest of the content that you're used to seeing on your vehicle, you can get on your helio, but we add it post-manufacture. So if you want a power leather seat, well, Leader's our seating supplier, we can get you that. You know, if you want blind spot detecting mirrors, well, Continental's our electronic supplier, we can get you that, right? We, we have the who's who the supply base engaged. So the process is you come into our showroom, say I want the red automatic with the leather seat and the blind spot detecting mirrors. That goes off to one of seven marketing centers. We close our stores at 9 p.m. We build out vehicles to midnight, so we have three hours to clear the system. At midnight, those vehicles go on trucks, and with seven marshalling centers, we're within nine hours of all of our stores. So theoretically, at 10 a.m. the next day, you get the vehicle exactly the way you wanted the day before, no matter what time you came in the show. And by doing that, that's part of why we can get $6,800. Like, I personally have a grudge against the light of vanity, right? I've gotten forced to buy so many of those, and I don't put makeup on, I don't care. But half the population does, right? So it gets added to every package and I get forced to buy. How much are they putting down for reserve? So we have two programs, refundable and non-refundable, and then we have four levels in each, 100, 250, 500, and 1,000. A third of those are $1,000 non-refundables. About 85% in total are non-refundable, and our overall average is about $423, I believe. And what states are you selling? Uh, all 50. And if, if you overlay our reservations on a map of population, it almost correlates exactly. Like we have fewer uh, reservations in Montana, but there's less people there. We have more in California and New York, there's more people there. So it almost tracks population exactly. And just go through your website to get to you? Yes. This is all, it, that, that's the other thing is uh, we did this without uh, using a Kickstarter or Indiegogo. We did this all on our own. So, so we targeted to have, to have an average of two stores per market in the top 60 markets. So initially, it'll probably be at least at least one store per market in the top 60 markets, and then we'll grow it. And does the problem that Tesla's encountered with the franchise dealer system worry you about getting into various markets? Um, worry is a strong word. Uh, so one, we're, we're technically a motorcycle, so the laws are different for motorcycle distribution than automotive distribution. Um, and so far we've had pretty good luck, but there, there's, we'll definitely have to do some uh, uh, leg work before it's all said and done. Yes? Uh, you mentioned the number of uh, reservations. Uh, how many of these stock uh, So we're approaching $16 million in uh, Reg A plus stock. Uh, the reason I can't give you an exact number, you have the anti-money anti laundering uh, checks, etc., etc. so it's a fuzzy number, uh, but it, it's, we're approaching 16 million right now. Yes? Uh, one of the, the strongest buying factors reported by consumers when they're selecting a vehicle is safety. Is, can you speak about the safety, please? Yes. So, um, because it's technically a motorcycle, we don't have to have seat belts or an airbag, right? But we do. So we have three airbags, two seat belts, electronic stability control, anti-lock brakes, and we're designing this vehicle to the highest automotive safety standards. So we're not taking any shortcuts on safety. Since it's a motorcycle, do you have to have a Probably not. So, so the, re the reason I, I say it that way, when we started out, um, there was a bunch of states that required a helmet uh, for uh, occupants of any age. We've gotten that changed in all but two states. Uh, we create a new category called an auto cycle. And I really think that's appropriate. I don't think this is exactly a car. I don't think this is exactly a motorcycle. I think what we're really doing is we're creating a new category and we named it auto cycle. So if you're over 21, there's only two states left that require helmets. There's a couple that uh, have eight, you know, age limited and we triage. So far we've been 100% successful in getting those laws changed uh, and we'll continue to step through. So I, by production, I, I suspect there won't be any state that requires them. Yes? Do you need motorcycle license then in order to drive this? Probably not. <laughs> so same. So like I said, we triage. We went helmet states any age, helmet states with some restriction, and then license only. So if you go to our website, we have maps of both uh, 
what states require helmets at what age and where you still need a license. Um, and then we're stepping through that as well. But what we're asking is really pretty reasonable and that's why we have such success. You don't need the same skill sets to drive this as you do a Harley, right? It's got automotive controls. You know, so it's a pretty sensible thing to get changed. Yes? How is the insurance industry? So I think it will get insured as automotive minus. So the Insurance Institute invited us out because some of the big carriers have gotten a lot of questions about Elio, so they wanted to see it. And so they, we took it out there and they drove it on their test track. The reason uh, motorcycle insurance is so inexpensive is because of low usage, right? No, nobody's driving their motorcycle today in Detroit or in my home state of Phoenix in July, right? So, so there's low usage of motorcycles. So this will get used more car-like than motorcycle-like. But everything that an insurer cares about, we're advantaged on. Right? So how much damage do you do to something you hit? Well, we weigh less, we do less damage. What's my exposure if I have to total it out? Well, we're $6,800, we're advantaged. It's safe, so we're advantaged. And then our, our service parts model will make our service parts much cheaper, so we're advantaged. So everything that insurers care about, we're advantaged on. So if they have, the rates have logic, and I believe they do, we should be car mining. Yes? Any word on the status of the ATV? So we continue to talk to them. I feel very good about it. And you know, if you go to their website, that their mission is to try to create American jobs and reduce our reliance on foreign oil. And I think we do that better than anybody. And so um, I feel good about it, but you, you just never know. But it, it's pr proceeding and it's going well. Uh, we hope to. So th that's one of the partners we haven't identified yet. So we'll offer traditional finance, or at least our intent is to offer traditional financing. And then we also have a program called Let Your Gas Savings Make Your Payments. So of the 235 million vehicles on the road today, 95 million of them are 11 years old or older. Now some of those are well-maintained older vehicles, but the bulk of those are clunkers. And so this program is really aimed at those folks. And the way it works is you walk into our showroom, sign your name, we give you a brand new vehicle and a credit card with a $300 limit on it, and we let you walk back out the door. Now the deal is you have to charge all your fuel with that credit card. And every time you buy gas, we charge a triple. So if you buy $10 worth of gas, it shows up with a $30 charge on your credit card stand. And that $20 extra goes to paying down your loan, right? It's your car payment. Now as long as you've driven the dealership and something gets 27 miles to the gallon or less, and all 95 million of those old cars do, your monthly fuel bill actually goes down, right? Three times 27 is 81 and we get 84. So from the consumer's perspective, they have a brand new vehicle under warranty, it's fun to drive. They don't have a car payment and they are guaranteed to spend less on gas next month at triple amount on their Elio than they did last month at single amount on their plunk. We can literally give cars away to the 95 million old car drivers. And that's why I think we'll have such an impact in the country. No, no, so it would just be like uh, located in the strip mall and then we partnered with Pep Boys to do service. So that partnership uh, was a big deal for us, so it gives us 800 authorized service locations day one. And as a startup, that's, that's uh, a nice luxury. You said 90% of the parts are sourced with North America. Are you <laughs> Yeah, so North America includes uh, Mexico and Canada. So I don't know that off the top of my head. So the the I believe when you buy a vehicle, it says U.S. content, and actually is a NAFTA content, right? And we're just being a little bit more accurate because you say North America because that's that's the truth. It's not American, but I think I can legally say American because that's what's on the sticker. But it's North America. Yeah. How long is your warranty? Uh, three year, thirty six thousand miles. Is there any, any other questions? Well, speaking of warranties, that voice is, is responsible for the service. What about large component replacements? Are you replace an engine or a transmission or something like that? I don't think any of the plug waste shops are so. Yeah, they've agreed to be full service for the vehicle. So, as compelling as it is for Elio Motors, we can increase their vehicle touches by 15% after four years of sales. Right, so that, that industry is contracting as cars get better and better every year and harder and harder to work on. So we have a, a way to meaningful grow their, their business, which is great for them, and we get 800 service locations day one, which is great for us. So it, it, it's a very nice partnership. Yeah. Any other uh, questions? 
All right, well, thank you, and feel free to come sit in the vehicle. Thank you.